Okay, so two more questions have, uh, oh, several questions have come up along uh, uh, several different lines. First one is, um, how do I take an object once I've made it editable and add more polygons to it? Let's say something that you want to do aside from extruding the inner or something like that. So what you can do is uh, you can actually use the knife tool to create more polygons within an object. All right. So if you're um, if you're looking at a, a face and you want to add a few more lines and a few more polygons in, uh, if the polygon tool is selected uh, and your object is editable, you can go up to structure and grab the knife, and this is just going to allow you to drag a line across an object. All right. And wherever you drag that line, you see creates a new edge. All right, so you could do multiple lines, you know, within one one plane, and then use that to extrude farther out. So you know, from there, I could let's say select that little tiny one. Zoom in a little bit closer. I could select that little tiny one that I've just extruded. <laughs> I guess I have to zoom in even closer. There we go. Uh, I could select just that little thing, and I could extrude, you know, the inner or the outer or any of those sort of things that I that I'm looking for. So let's just, you know, drag this in, and there you go. That would give you that little negative bevel if you needed to add something else to it. Okay, so the knife tool can really help you out when trying to render those those uh, objects. Question? How do you add more uh, subdivisions? More subdivisions to a polygon. Let's say uh, we have a polygon selected uh, under structure. You should be able to do, let's see, structure or, do, 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 do. hold on, I'm going to pause here. Okay, so I have a polygon selected that I want to um, subdivide into more segments. If you go to function and then down here where it says subdivide, that will allow you to, to ask you how many subdivisions you want. And if you click one, it'll split it up with one segment in the middle and divide it into quadrants. So it, it takes e every edge and it gives it one segment. Does that make sense? So it allows it to, to split up in that sort of way. Um, okay, one more question that, that's, that's been common is how do I make a hole in something? So let's take a look. If you have an object, let's say a cube, um, and let's say another object like a cylinder, and as long as the, uh, what we want to do is we take the object, we want to make a hole in the cube that's cylindrical, all right? So what I want to do is I want to take um, whatever object it is and create a positive object that's going to be the negative space, all right? So this cylinder, what I'm going to do is make the height, let's say, 300. You want to make sure that the object is, is larger overall than, your, uh, than the object you want to take uh, the negative space out of. All right, so you see how the cylinder goes beyond the top and the bottom. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab um, the uh, what's called a bool tool. All right, b o o l e sounds like some sort of space invader or something. Uh, you take the negative space and you drop that into the bool first, and then you take the the positive space and you drop that in next, and you see what happens. It creates a perfect cylindrical hole out of that object. All right, so it's a combination of two different objects that creates the positive and the negative space, <clears throat> and that that's under the um, the bool structure. All right, so the question was about um, you know if the cylinder isn't big enough for that first negative object. If I made it 150 now instead, and you can see it's it's actually in the center of the object. If I were to move that cylinder up, then the hole would happen. Uh, you know, it wouldn't go all the way through. It wouldn't reach the bottom, but it would definitely go through the center of it. And then the other question was about um, if, uh, if we replace the object. It could be any sort of object. So it could be a sphere, for example. And if we drop this one in, let's say we put it up through here. Um, if we make a sphere, now we have a spherical shaped, like a pool, if you will, uh, out, of that, out of that hole. So. Uh, it's a removal of any sort of object, and in fact, if I move this over, you can see, you know, it's going to take it out of that section there. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use that tool to create highly complex polygon forms.